Greetings, Gotham City! It's me, the Joker, the Clown Prince of Crime. So we finally have our first official teaser trailer for Joker 2, a film that I still question whether or not it needs to be made, but also the concept is interesting, but also it costs a lot more than the first one, but then also the first one grossed a billion dollars, so of course they were going to make a sequel to Joker. But then also going off the trailer, just from the way this film visually looks, Todd Phillips is really being all altruistic about it, we're seeing Lawrence Sher's stunning cinematography, I wouldn't mind seeing a Joker 2. Not to mention the fact that the end of the first Joker did leave story possibilities for a Joker sequel, but then again, this film being announced as a musical was kind of weird. It was like, wait, what? I thought they were just gonna go like crime thriller and we were gonna like introduce Bruce Wayne again and we we're gonna do some like proper like mob stuff and we're gonna see Joker rise to be the clown prince of crime. But no, instead we now have Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn and we're seeing like a love story between the two of them and such and it could be interesting. Going off the trailer, it looks interesting, and the idea that they're using musical elements to tell that side of the love story could be interesting. Now, when it comes to the first Joker film, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember at the time loving it. I saw it three times. Granted, I only had to see it three times because I had to see it for university and such. I would have probably seen it once or twice. And at the time, I really enjoyed it, but having watched Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, the whole time I was watching it, I was kind of like, oh... Joker kind of just ripped this film off and so I haven't really revisited Joker since and it's going to be interesting because I do think there is a lot of good stuff in Joker. I mean Joaquin Phoenix I think deservedly won the Oscar that year. That's also not me discrediting Adam Driver's performance in Marriage Story because he was great but I mean when you look at what Joaquin did you kind of just look at him and go yeah. That, that That's the best actor winner right there. And cinematography wise, I loved the look of the first Joker and I also loved the score for the first Joker. That theme by... Oh, Hilda... Hilda something. Hilda Guanadotte... Her score was amazing. Fantastic, it's really good. But then also, at the end of the day, was Joker really that good of a film? It'll be interesting to do a movie commentary on that film in the future. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the teaser trailer for Joker Folie 2. Oui, c'est bon. Hey Fleck, you got a joke for us today? Come with me and you'll be... Okay, I'm not the only one that thought that was the intro to Pure Imagination, right? Like, I don't know if it's just because I have Wonka on the brain, but those are the notes for the beginning of Pure Imagination. And you'll be in a world of pure imagination take a look and you'll see into your imagination i mean just kind of right off the bat i just have to mention this this film looks stunning lawrence Scher's cinematography looks stunning if there's going to be one battle at the oscars this year it's going to be between greg frazier and lawrence Scher because this film looks stunning, but then also Doom Part 2 is absolutely stunning, and it's going to be an interesting battle, I will say. We use music to make us whole. Okay, so the idea that they're using music as a sort of therapy is kind of interesting, and I do like how in many ways this film is going to justify the idea of it being a musical by using music as a tool for therapy for Arthur Fleck. From what we've also been told, this film isn't like an original musical. It's got a bunch of like songs that pre-exist, and it's essentially a jukebox musical. It's going to be like, um... Rock of Ages. I'm nobody. So Lady Gaga's interpretation of Harley Quinn is going to be interesting because in many ways the first Joker was dubbed like the incel film. This is the film for incels. And in this film we're going to be seeing the incel Arthur Fleck fall in love and develop a girlfriend and we can see their sort of relationship. But also I do like how kind of cinematographically she is walking up the stairs which parallels Arthur in the first film. And then later on in the trailer we see her descending the staircase as well. So in many ways her character arc is going to parallel Arthur. I also do think it's interesting that she is a patient in Arkham Asylum and it's not a therapist and it's not the Joker driving her insane. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. But then also the whole like finger gun imagery thing, that is just a ripoff from Taxi Driver. I remember watching Taxi Driver and it happened and I was like, oh, Joker just like ripped it off. Like there are times where I do feel like the first Joker treads the line of being a film about homages to Taxi Driver and just ripping off Taxi Driver. Like if the story and themes of the first Joker weren't too similar to Taxi Driver, I wouldn't mind homages like the finger guns, but it's the fact that it's so on the nose about it, you kind of just go, 
you're just ripping off Taxi Driver, mate. Come on. Can Joaquin Phoenix sing? That's something I'm curious about. I actually don't know. But then also the problem I have with this trailer is again, it's doing the Hollywood thing where apparently they're just not advertising musicals as musicals, despite the fact that it's a musical. Like that doesn't make any sense because apparently if you market a film as a musical, audiences won't go and see it, which just doesn't make any sense to me. What the the thing is though, a lot of the musical set pieces they're showing in the trailer look stunning. Like the lighting, the cinematography is genuinely incredible to look at. It also seems like Harley is the one that's going to corrupt Arthur again, which is going to be interesting because at the end of the day, we saw at the end of the first film, Arthur was still, you know, going around killing people, even in hospital, even in Arkham. So it's curious to see who is the worser influence, her or him. I do like Todd Phillips' interpretation of the Joker makeup and the Harley Quinn makeup. It's different, but it works. And I like how they made Harley's makeup fit in with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. There is a vision to this world, which I really do like. I love the fact that this is... It's not really a comic book film, like it's using the DC characters and such, but it's a take on a comic book property that is taking itself seriously, but also it has its own unique flair and vision. I'll tell you what's changed, I'm not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. Okay, so I'm going to be very curious about the mental health commentary, because the mental health commentary in the first film was very on the nose, but also it, it takes place in a scene where it's both funny and dark, and I don't know if it lands- uh, How about another joke, Murray? And honestly, I do just have to rewatch the first Joker film, because I don't actually know how it entirely lands anymore. Because for all I know, I rewatch and I go, this just doesn't fit. Because I had that experience with Barbie recently, where I rewatched Barbie and I was like, oh, this movie is not nearly as good as I remember it being. And you'll be... Please, tell- that is- that's- that's just pure imagination. I wanna see the real you. Okay, despite all the big extravagant musical set piece shots we got in this trailer, that is the best shot of the entire trailer. The amount of source in that shot is incredible. That must have been a nightmare to film, but it looks incredible. It's one of those shots where like, you kind of go, do we really need the shot? Yeah, you 100% do because that shot is awesome. This is why I feel like DC as a brand works better when they do their own like original takes and spins on the material rather than trying to do an MCU type thing. Like with James Gunn taking over, I feel like he has the right mentality of allowing spin-off films to exist. Like the Batman can be a spin-off, Joker can be a spin-off. We'll develop even more spin-offs that aren't connected to the main DCU continuity because we need films filmmakers to experiment, do something different, otherwise the genre will be stale. Like, don't get me wrong, I have my critiques of James Gunn's take on the DCU and his plans for the DC universe, but I love the fact he's just going, yes, let's tell Elseworlds stories. In many ways, it's one of the reasons as to why the MCU's become so stale and boring. They just keep going, oh no, we can't do this project because it has to link into the MCU. Who cares? Tell a story about Spider-Man that is like set off in a different universe and is doing X, Y, and Z. Or make an Iron Man film that isn't Robert Downey Jr. and is a different actor and it's like a different interpretation of Iron Man. Do a film based on the Marvel comics, The Marvels, which is not about the Captain Marvel family stuff. It's the one about the guy from the ground that's looking at the superheroes of the Marvel Universe and such. The story of that comic would make a fantastic film, would be a nice examination of the Marvel heroes, but they won't do it because it apparently doesn't fit the MCU vision. That's boring. That's why the MCU, I feel at times as well, has become so stale. It's not taking good risks. And looking at Joker Folia Du, that's a bold risk. This is bold. This is at least memorable. Even if the film sucks, at least DC took a swing. I think that's just what the comic book genre needs right now. Someone willing to take risks. I mean, you look at The Flash, right? The Flash was trying to appease Michael Keaton Batman fans. Flash fans, but also not really Flash fans, but then also DC fans, but also the fact that they tried to cram in all these like horrible AI Easter eggs and stuff, it sucked, the film itself sucked, and it ended up appeasing nobody. Like that film was so risk averse, and it's just like, what was the point of making it? You ended up pleasing nobody by trying to please everybody. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the trailer for Joker, fully adieu, so far. I'm liking what I'm seeing, it looks interesting, I have no idea really what the story is going to be about, but 
it looks interesting. Visually, it looks stunning. I can't wait to see what Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga decide to do performance-wise with Joker and Holly. I can't wait to see Todd Phillips' interpretation of Joker and Holly. I'm curious to see how the musical elements will play into the film because obviously they're not going to show it in the trailer. Even if the film ends up sucking, at least it's a bold, risky take. Not to mention the fact that last shot is so cool, it's so awesome, I love that filmmaking source, please give me more of that. But those are my thoughts on the teaser trailer for Joker, fully ado, what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments down below, like, comment, subscribe, follow the social media, all the good stuff, until we meet again, see you guys next time.